A couple of years have passed between the end of season 4 and the start of season 5 of The Last Kingdom. Uhtred is now the lord of Romkofa and he is raising and training Aethelstan to take his place as the future ruler of England one day. We also catch up with Brida and she is now the leader of a large band of Danish warriors and her daughter Vibike is a seer and well respected member of the tribe. And Brida works up her army and prepares them for an attack on England which will begin imminently. Next we catch up with Sigtrigger and his wife Stiora as they are the rulers of a village called Aethrowick and this is an open community with both pagans and Christians living there peacefully side by side. We are introduced to Sigtrigger's brother Rognavald who is actually there as a spy for Breda and he betrays Sigtrigger by helping Breda take over the town and forcing Stiora to go into hiding with a handful of servants. On the other side of England, young Uhtred stumbles into Rumkofa, beaten and bloody into the arms of Uhtred who finds out that Breda has castrated his son as revenge against Uhtred for his betrayal in season 4. Uhtred also eventually hears about Breda's attack on Aethrowick and heads there to stop Breda and rescue his daughter. He goes to Aethelstead who is also in Rumkofa during this time to get the support of her soldiers but she refuses this as she has just found out that she has cancer and will soon be dying from the disease. King Edward also hears about Breda's attack and he sends some of his men to go help Uhtred and with a dozen of his own soldiers Uhtred eventually runs into Sigtrigger who is set free by Breda to find Uhtred and bring him to Aethrowick and together they hatch a plan to sneak into the town through the sewers and save the city. Breda begins to start torturing the villagers to make Stiora come out of hiding and this eventually works with Stiora challenging Breda to a trial by combat. While this duel is taking place Uhtred and his companions sneak into Aethrowick and free the villagers and begin a revolt against Breda and her warriors. In the chaos that follows, Vibike falls from the top of a bell tower and dies, causing an emotionally devastated Breda to retreat with her remaining forces, but she also takes Father Prelik as a prisoner with her. Sigtrigger captures Rognavald, where he is offered the option of a quick death or a trial by Danish law, where he must hold a bar of metal from a boiling cauldron and walk nine steps with it. He is able to successfully complete this trial and allowed to live to see another day. Uhtred and Aethelflaed share their last few precious moments together and she eventually passes away in his arms and Edward along with Lord Aethelhelm arrives in Mercia with some of his soldiers to help maintain the peace or so he says. Back in Aylesbury the news of Aethelflaed's death is made public and Edward calls a meeting with all the eldermen of Mercia to decide the next successor to the throne but he assassinates all the eldermen as he had correctly assumed that they had all been bribed by Aethelhelm to support his grandson to the throne instead of Aelfwin. But in a twist, instead of appointing his niece to the throne, he appoints himself as King of Mercia as well as Wessex. Aelswith quickly helps Aelfwin escape from the palace to ensure that she is safe from Edward and all his political ambitions. Queen Aelflaed, the wife of King Edward and the daughter of Lord Aethelhelm, secretly travels north to Lindisfarne, but she is accidentally killed by assassins sent by Aethelhelm, who were there to kill a holy woman named Aels, but in the confusion, they kill Elfled instead. Hasten comes across the dead bodies of the queen and hides it in his cart and decides to travel to Romkofa to let Uhtred know of the murders that have just occurred. As news of the ambush spreads, both Danes and Saxons blame each other for trying to start a war and both Sigtrigger and Edward begin to prepare for a battle. All of this occurring with Aethelhelm smugly watching in the background at the chaos he has caused, still unaware that he has caused the death of his own daughter. Aethelhelm sends a unit of soldiers to attack Romkofa and Osferth is killed in the ensuing battle and Aethelhelm also finds out that he is responsible for the death of his daughter. This causes a devastated Aethelhelm to contemplate suicide, but he is convinced by his lieutenant to help his grandson inherit the throne rather than throw his own life away. Uhtred finds out about Aethelhelm's betrayal and convinces Edward to call off the war against Sigtrigger, and Edward agrees to this, sending Uhtred off with an offer of peace for Sigtrigger and the Danes. However, before Uhtred can tell them about the truth, Sigtrigger's forces discover Aethelhelm's army 
and they crossed a frozen lake launching a surprise attack on the Saxon forces and causing much devastation. Edward eventually arrives and sees his own troops getting slaughtered and leads a counterattack which overwhelms the Danes and forces Sigtaker and his army to surrender. Aethelhelm is able to escape from the battle and heads for Scotia hoping to raise support for his grandson Aelford to become the next king. Sig Trigger, Stiora, and many of their soldiers are now captured and prisoners of war. Uhtred begs Edward for mercy for his daughter and all the Danes involved in the revolt, to which Edward agrees, but only if Sig Trigger and his men get baptized and swear loyalty to him. Sig Trigger refuses to get baptized and leave his gods, and Uhtred is forced to execute him, causing a huge rift between him and Stiora. It is eventually suggested that Stiora be instilled as the next queen of Aethelwick, but she refuses to swear allegiance to Edward since he was responsible for the death of her husband and she is banished along with all her followers and Rognavald is made king of Aethelwick. Near the outskirts of Aethelwick, Breda ambushes some Saxons and sends the only survivor with the message demanding Uhtred meet her at Leodis for a final showdown. Uhtred reaches the designated spot and has a fierce one-on-one -on -one battle with Brita, eventually overpowering her, but he is unable to get the final killing blow as she is too much a part of him to kill. However, Stiora has also snuck into the city and she shoots an arrow through Brita's chest, killing her and allowing her soul to finally go to Valhalla. Elsewhere, Edith, Ailswith and Ilfwin are captured by Aethelhelm's men who want to use Ilfwin as a pawn for their master's political gain. But the three women manage to overpower one of their captors and kill him. But unfortunately, the second captor is able to grab Ilfwin and quickly escape on horseback, leaving a devastated Ailswith and Edith behind. A dejected Uhtred returns to Aethelwick where he eventually learns that Ailfwin Aethelhelm and Ilford are all at Bebenberg, and everyone seems to recognize this as an opportunity for Uhtred to finally reclaim Bebenberg and defeat Aethelhelm once and for all. Uhtred proposes a plan to Edward where the forces of both Mercia and Wessex would join together to stop the alliance between Scottish King Constantine and Aethelhelm. However, King Constantine was able to pull one over Edward and his commanders as he has his army arrived by land and is already placed at Bebenburg ready for a battle. This makes a siege of Bebenburg impossible especially while Ilfwin is still being held as hostage. With open warfare and a siege not being viable options, Uhtred, Finnan and Citric sneak into the castle to try and free Ilfwin but Finnan and Citric are quickly captured and imprisoned as is Hastin who is later killed but never reveals the secret plans of the group. Uhtred continues to search for Elfwyn within Bebenberg Castle while Edward launches an attack against the castle's gate far too prematurely and without waiting for Uhtred's signal. A battle against Constantine and Edward's men commences and in the confusion Uhtred is able to sneak out with Elfwyn from the castle and to safety. While on the outskirts of the castle, Uhtred meets Stiora and her men who are watching from the sidelines as Edward and the Wessex forces slowly begin to falter. Uhtred is able to eventually convince Stiora to get her forces to join the battle promising Northumbria will be a safe haven for the Danes once he becomes the ruler of Bebenburg. Stiora agrees and her forces surprise the Scots with a rear attack and the tide turns with Edward and his armies able to secure a victory from that point onwards. Uhtred sees Wittgar in Bebenburg Castle and chases after him with Aethelstan close behind. Aethelstan bombs into Aethelhelm and Aelford and there the truth about the death of Aelford's mom is revealed and Aethelhelm kills himself due to the shame of his actions. Wittgar and Uhtred have a short duel with Wittgar meeting his end after getting thrown from the balcony and getting impaled on a candlestick. Uhtred is now officially the Lord of Bebenburg and the Lord of Northumbria. After long last, he is finally able to reclaim his homeland and destiny. But he does not swear loyalty to Edward, which sets the foundation for the upcoming Last Kingdom movie.